So hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So this is going to be part 2 of the matplotlib using Python series and in today's tutorial we're basically going to be covering a few more basic visualizations such as pie charts, bar charts as well as a scatter graph. So if you haven't already watched part 1 of this tutorial I really recommend you do um, and if you haven't already watched the pandas series using Python um, I would also recommend watching that because um, We'll be using Python to read in some real life weather like data and then basically plotting that. So, to begin with, you need to make sure you're importing the following libraries. So, we want to import matplotlib. So, import map, oops, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Uh, let me just quickly run this so I have linting available. Uh, and then you want to import pandas. So, import pandas as pd. So matplotlib is the library that we're going to be using to basically plot our visualizations and pandas is what we're going to be using to read in all our data that we have uh, which is going to be the weather data and then basically manipulate that if we have to so just to give you guys a quick uh, gist of the data the data file will look something like this i'll make sure to attach a link to that and the code in the description as well so it's temperature related data that we used in the last tutorial and it's split by day and then you have basically a forecast up until the 7th of September. So we're, what we're going to be using is basically the date time column, the temperature max, temperature min, and average temperature. So let's close this off. And as the first step, what we're going to basically do is actually import this data in Pandas. So create a new variable called df for data frame, and then use pd.readcsv and read in the data file. So if we now print out the data frame, we basically see the same contents that we did in the Excel file. Now, like I said, we're only going to be using one, two, three, four columns. So we'll limit the state of range to only those columns by using df equals df and then providing a 2D array with only the name of the columns that we want to keep. So we want date time, temp max, temp min, and temp. Cool. So that should basically give us only the columns that we need and basically get rid of the rest. And um, that's around roughly 15 rows of data. So what we're going to do next, now that we have the data ready, is basically take a look at how we would plot a simple bar chart. So to begin with, like I said in the last tutorial, we create two variables, fig and ax. So fig, st fig stands for figure and ax stands for axis. And we assign that to plt.subplots and then provide a fig size as, as a tuple. So fig size is basically the size of the canvas that we're going to draw on. So I'm going to say the width is going to be 20 uh, inches and the height is going to be 5 inches. So if you run that, you get a plain little canvas based on the dimensions that you provide. Now, every time you add something, you want to add something to this canvas, you will use the ax variable. So we're going to do ax.bar, which will basically create a bar chart. And then the first argument is basically going to be sort of like a list or a series of the items that are going to be on the x-axis. And then the second argument is going to be a series or a list of items that are going to be on the y-axis. So we know that our x-axis is basically going to be the date time column from the df. And then our y-axis is basically, let's just say it's going to be the average temperature from our data frame. So at this point, we'll have the x-axis as date time, y-axis as temp, and we can just quickly run this. And it will give us a default looking bar chart. So the x-axis is date time, and then the y-axis is the average temperature. And we can add a few jazzy bits to this. For example, we can give it a color. So we can do color equals and then a list. And the list, I can do something like dark orange, for example. And then, you know, it will do dark orange for everything. Now, let's say you wanted to give it two colors. You can do that. So if I do dark orange and red, for example, what we'll do is basically go in a sequence. So the first one's going to be dark orange, followed by whatever the next one is. And then it will just start over again. So it's going dark orange, red, all the way until the end of the series of data. So to keep this quite straightforward, I'm just going to go with one color here. And let's just stick with dark orange. Um, to make this slightly more interesting, we'll add the title for this chart, as well as the X and Y axis labels. So we'll do ax.setTitle. I'm just going to call this daily average um temperature forecast i should give it a nice little title and then we'll set labels for our x and y axis by using ax dot set x label and then so i'm going to call this dates because it's dates and then ax dot set um y label to basically set a label for the y axis that's basically going to be the temperature 
and now that when we run this we should basically get a title like we basically wanted to have and then an x-axis label as well as a y-axis label now that we have all of this nicely showing one last thing i'd like to show you guys is how to get rid of um the top and right hand side border of this weird box that shows up because i prefer it that way anyway so it's a good thing to know so you'd use ax.spines ax.spines and then as a in the square brackets you basically say which spines you want to get rid of so i'm going to say i want to do get rid of the top spines and then i'm going to use dot set visible and then use a false boolean in here that basically takes the top spine or the top border of this uh, weird box that shows up on the axis and then sets the visibility of that to false similarly we'll get rid of the right one by just changing top to right and now we have a nice looking bar chart um one last thing that i'll show you guys how to do is also save this bar chart so you can do fig.save fig uh which will basically save the entire canvas or the figure and then you just need to give it a file name so i'm just going to say uh test bar chart png then you can use things like transparent which will basically decide whether you want the background to remain transparent or not we want it to not be transparent so i'm going to transparent equals false and then finally dpi can be used to set the quality of the image so it's like pixels per inch for example i'm just going to set that to 150 for now now if i run this uh, and go back to my folder i should have a new image called uh, test bar chart that's basically what i'm expecting so you've got all the title the data showing in a bar chart as well as all the labels nicely so then you can use this wherever you need for example in a powerpoint um that's basically it for how you do a very simple bar chart within um, python now obviously you could um, add other stuff to this as well so for example if you wanted to add in the um let's this is the average temperatures right so let's say you wanted to add in the minimum temperature you could just do ax dot bar the x-axis is still going to see be the same obviously that's going to be the date time so in here we can just change that to um I think it was uh, min temp, or let's try temp min. Yeah, it was temp min. And then we can change the color to something else. For example, I'll just change this to uh, red. Now, if you run that again, we'll get something that looks a bit like this, which is a sort of stacked chart, I guess, in this case. Um, and it will basically um, show us a representation of the average temperature versus the minimum temperature for that day now you could do that with other stuff as well which is just a bit more of a way to add a bit more jazz to the visual that you have um that's basically it um that all we're going to be covering for the bar chart let's now move on to a scatter chart which is going to be very similar to um what we did in the previous one so we'll begin by once again saying a figure and axis so plot.subplots uh dot plots give it a fig size of 20 by 5 again and now um, all you have to do is follow a similar format so instead of ax.bar you do ax.scatter this thing also expects the first argument to be the x-axis values and the second argument to be the y-axis values so let's say the x-axis is going to be date time and then the y-axis is going to be the max temperature for now uh, if we run this we should basically get a very simple looking sort of scatter chart which shows us the max temperatures and then the uh, date times on the x-axis now let's do x.grid and that will make it look slightly better because now we can actually coordinate where these points relate to as well now let's say you wanted to add a bit of color to this you can go ahead and do color equals red for example and that will change the color of the um, scatters you can also change what kind of marker you want so you can by default it's set to o which is what's showing up change it to x for example i'm just going to leave it on o for now and then in order to basically later have a legend show up for multiple scatters if you're plotting multiple things uh, you need to set a label so i'm going to set the label of this to be temp max now when i set the label you can basically do something called ax.legend and that will basically add a oh i spelled it wrong A-G-F-T. And that will basically add a legend on the top right as you can see right here it says temp max now we can do a similar thing and add in also the um, minimum temperatures so i'll change uh, x axis still remains the same date time i'll change temp max to temp min i'll change the color to green 
uh, we'll change the label to temp min and if we run again we'll get a nice little scatter chart um, add scatter added for also the min temperatures now to top this off nicely we could uh, mix the scatter chart with a line chart on the same axis so we can add a sort of line that will go through the two uh, scatter points the max and min um, for the average temperatures so to do that, you simply do ax dot uh, plot, which so when you do dot plot, it default uses a line chart. Give it an x axis of date time, uh, a y axis of temp, which is the average temperature, and I'm going to give it a color of blue. Uh, we can also give it a marker. I'm just going to do O for now, and then the label we'll just set that to temp average. Run this again. And boom, we have a nice looking uh, summary chart, which basically shows us the correlation, I guess, between the um, high temperatures, low temperatures, as well as the average for all of the days uh, coming up. Now you can obviously add in the x-axis titles, y-axis titles, as well as the normal title uh, by just using the same method we did before. I'm just going to copy across this right here. So if we copy and paste this... Uh, here i'll change this to let's say daily temperature forecast dates and temperatures will stay the same and then we can get rid of the top and right borders as well and that's basically it for how to create a scatter chart now let's quickly cover how to do a pie chart and that will basically summarize today's tutorial thanks for watching this video so far I'd like to quickly shout out GoLogin, which is a company that lets you stay anonymous while browsing different accounts online and manage your private accounts. So many of you guys are active online, developing businesses on the internet, promoting yourself on social networks, etc. And with a large number of accounts comes obviously the inconvenience and risks that you may get confused by dozens of accounts like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. At the same time, you're obviously constantly risking important data that you store in your browser in case you get banned on certain applications and you lose everything. There is a all-in-one solution to this actually, which is called Go Login. It's a secure platform for managing all your online accounts, which will have a lot of ton of security features like a unique digital footprint for each of your accounts, secure cloud storage under key and lock, digital footprint control through customization of settings, centralized access allocation for the team, etc. Now, if you guys would like to support the video because this video is affiliated, uh, I would highly recommend you guys to click the link in the description and try out for yourself the free trial of GoLogin or purchase it if it supports your needs. Thank you. So in order to do a pie chart, you sort of need categorized data. So you'd need mainly two columns. You'd need a uh, label and then you need like a number that that corresponds to that label. So what we will do here, we have a DF uh, data frame, right? What we'll do here is basically include an extra column. So instead of just looking at these default columns, we're going to include an extra one. Uh, let's see what we have available actually. So if I run this again and look at DF, we should have a column here called uh, conditions, which basically tells us what the condition is on the day. And we're, that's what we're going to be using to basically plot a pie chart that will show us the proportion of the conditions across the next 14 days. So we'll do in here, in, instead of not including conditions, we'll also include conditions so that we can use it later on in the code. I shouldn't mess up any of our existing charts because they don't really use conditions anyway. But when we run this again, we'll get a new column called conditions. So what we're going to do with this is basically we're going to group this uh, data frame so that for every duplicate that this um, conditions column has it gets the count of that so basically it's going to get a count of the days uh, during which this condition is met to do that we create a new variable called data grouped and then equals that to df.group by and then by is going to be set to conditions because we want it to group by conditions we set the um, as index to false because we don't want the columns to be set as an index and then we use dot count as the aggregation method. And if we do df group, you'll be able to see that uh, the data frame has been grouped by conditions column. We only have unique values here. And then all the other columns sort of got used to get the count of all of these conditions. So there was three days where the conditions were clear, one day with overcast, 10 with partially cloudy, and one with rain and partially cloudy. So we obviously don't need these 
three other columns we just need conditions and the days right so what we will do here is do df group equals df group and then we'll just keep the columns that we need so we'll do conditions and we'll do uh let's just keep temp for now they're all the same so we just have to rename that column uh and then we print this out again should end up with just two and then we'll just rename these columns to something a bit more sensible so we'll do df group columns equals which will basically allow us to overwrite these column names so first one i'm going to call weather second one i'll just call days so the days on um how many days have actually been under that weather we print this out again the column should be overwritten by whatever we provided in that array because there's two columns we only provide two um now that the data is basically prepared let's get into how we would plot this on a, a pie chart so first off we do the same thing as last time uh create the initial canvas for us to draw on. Uh, i'm going to set this to eight by five because we don't need it to be that wide and then um all we do is type in similar pattern again ax.py instead of ax.scatter or ax.var and the first argument is basically going to be the um the values uh so this column here the days so we'll do df root days second uh argument is basically going to be the labels so that's going to be the weather column so we'll do labels equals df df root and weather if you run this now um what you see is it gives us a really basic pie chart um and it's basically representing all of the data so if you remember partially cloudy was probably yeah, was the highest one with 10 it would be cool to have like percentages and stuff in here as well which is what we'll be adding right now so in order to have percentage you do auto pct and then you provide a format you do percentage 1.1 f percentage percentage and what this basically says is you want um you want to basically get the proportions of the proportions as percentages and also have a one decimal place and the percentage sign um it's basically a way to tell the pie chart that you want it formatted a specific way and what values you want displayed uh and then once you're done with that we can also provide like a array, array of colors or a list of colors using the colors argument so I'm just going to go with a few colors here. How many categories do we have? One, two, three, four. So four colors. So we'll go white, light gray, uh, dark orange, and light, light blue. Run this again, and boom. It looks a lot better now because we actually have percentages showing up, and uh, we've changed the colors a little bit. So everything looks a lot more sort of professional. Now that we've done with that, uh, we can also set a quick title for this. So we can do something like set title, and then that's just going to be weather type forecast. Uh, I can change the font size as well, by the way. I'm just going to leave it to 15 for now. So that's what it will look like. And then you can save it up and, you know, use it for whatever analysis you're trying to save this for. That's basically it for today's tutorial guys hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something new through this um if you guys have any ideas for tutorials please make sure to leave them down in the comments below and i'll get back to them as soon as possible in the meantime please subscribe to the channel as i'm really trying to get to 100,000 subscribers right now i know it's a long target but with all your guys support we can get there very quickly um as always guys thanks for watching and i will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial peace